back and forth, no surprise, ultimately you fall short. What did it come down to? Well, I, I love really made some big buckets. And, you know, obviously we'd like to hit our free throws. And, uh, you know, the, you know, Mark uh, not being able, you know, he was never in, in the game. And uh, our guys fought, you know, they're really good. They're they're really good. They're they're experienced, and uh, uh, they hit us with that onslaught of threes, and it looked like you know, we were going to get blown out of the dome. And then our guys came back, and uh, we got that w one point lead, and we fouled on a on a, and we did foul, you know. But you got to play defense and make them shoot the ball, and then uh, you got to you got to put some free throws in and. That put some game pressure on them, but uh, congratulations to them. You know they they've had a, uh, they played an outstanding game. I thought both teams played played their hearts out, and uh, it's an emotional win and it's an emotional loss, and that's the way a game like this should be. Coach, as you walked off the court for the final time, can you describe the emotions that you were feeling? Uh, just for my players. You know, I'm, 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 I'll deal with me later. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. I, for me, my entire time coaching, I always wanted at the end of the year, or whatever the last game is, where you're either crying for joy or you're crying for sorrow. Um, and if you are, that means you've put everything into it. And I have a, a bunch of kids who are crying, and I'm proud of them. They've been a joy to coach. And they've played winning basketball, and they did tonight too. But uh, so did the other team. That's the final team that you're going to coach. Right. What was the final message to them in there? No, just how proud I mean, we love them and the brotherhood that they've developed. I mean, they're double champions, regular season, Western Regional champs, 32 wins. Are you kidding me? You know, and this is my final year with this team. They, they've been magnificent. I'm, I'm so proud of them, and I love them. And uh, so it's, you know, right now it's our responsibility to take care of them and uh, make sure that they're okay. They're, you know, they're really down, you know, and especially younger players will, will you know, they'll, they'll look at a free throw and say, I lost the game. And that's the other thing we try to think. Look, one play does not win or lose the game. Don't beat yourself up. You know, we, we had our opportunities. They, they made one more opportunity than us. And, uh, but don't beat yourself up because we wouldn't be here with, without them. You know, they've all done really good things to get us this far. But uh, I love the fact that they feel that bad. And, uh, and then uh, um, we just have to take care of them. I know I'm speaking for all of college basketball, but thank you. Thank yeah. you for everything no, you're you've done. Yeah, it's, you know, I'm, obviously I'll deal with all that later. But uh, uh, it, it, this team's been a joy for me to coach, and, and especially them turning it around in March and to put us in a position where, you know, we had a chance to play on Monday. And that's, that's the ultimate goal, is to play on Monday and have a chance to win. All right, so there you go. When the all-time rank and there's a lot of ones, means you're good, right? Really good. We know about the career, the national championships, the final fours, the elite eights, the sweet 16s. Uh, nobody was better in the tournament. Now, he got to play more games than a guy like, than say like John Wood, but Coach K, from an NCAA tournament resume standpoint, nobody did more than what he did at those levels right there. Afterwards, Coach K, dressing the media. We'll take one question for the student athletes, and then we'll have coach. Uh, at, we'll invite coach to make an opening statement. Why don't Why don't I just make an opening statement since Go ahead, no coach. one has asked the question? Right? Sounds good, coach. All right. So first of all, congratulations uh, to North Carolina, uh, uh, Hubert and his staff, and those kids have done a heck of a job. And tonight was a was a battle. I mean, it was a, a game that. The winner was going to be joyous, and the loser was going to be in agony. 
and, uh, uh, and that's the type of game we expected. We would have liked to have been on the other side of it, but I'm proud of what my guys have done. And uh, they've been an amazing group for me, the youngest team I've coached. And uh, we had our chances tonight, and uh, they made more. They made a couple uh, more plays than we did. But uh, our guys played their hearts out. And, uh, but uh, I'm proud of them. I, I've loved my team, and my staff loves them. And uh, they've been a, just a joy for me to coach. So we can open it up. We'll take questions for Coach Krzyzewski. You're the student athletes from Duke. Second row on the right, Jeff. Jeff Goodman from Stadium. Mike, what were your emotions when you were walking off the court for the last time? Yeah, just, I'm not, it's not about me, right? You know, especially right now. You know, my, you know, as a coach, I'm just concerned about these guys. I mean, I see, you know, they're already crying on the court. And, and um, I mean, that's the only thing you can think about. And then going into the locker room, you know, I've, I've said my entire career, or when I knew what the hell I was doing, that uh, I wanted my seasons to end where my team was either crying tears of joy or tears of sorrow because then you knew that they gave everything. And I had a locker room filled with guys who were crying. And it's a beautiful sight. It's not the sight that I would want. I'd want the other. But it's a side that I really respect and makes me understand just how good this group was. So that's, and I'm, and that's what I'm concerned. I don't want any of these guys to leave and say, I, I should have made that one free throw. I should have made that one. Uh, they, you know, we win and we lose together. And we've won 32 games and two championships together. And that's what I want them to realize. Front row all the way right, Dennis. Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports. Mike, you might be one of the few people in this room who are actually I don't were, know where you are. right here. I'm sorry. Sorry. That, that might have seen or even remember Houston, UCLA in 68. You've been on the international stage, 100 tournament games. Could you put this game in perspective since it's never been played before until tonight? Well, I think it reached the level of that, that, that you would expect, you know, of. Uh, I mean, those kids from both teams played their hearts out. Uh, I mean, the crowd was standing most of the game, I think, right? I mean, it, it, it was a heck of a game. And, and so it met up to that. Yeah. And a little bit, it was disjointed, like we, you know, which games like that can be. But uh, uh, I, I, I think it met up to that level. And, and, uh, I'm proud of my guys. Look, they, you know, we had our, we had our chances in the last couple minutes. Let, you get a one point lead if, if you can get a stop. But they're good. You know, they're, they're really put a lot of pressure on you offensively. Front row center. Coach Schaefer Murray, Washington Sports Network. Uh, can you just reflect on your career and what it's meant to I'm you? I'm not going to, I'd rather okay. not. Can, can I'm not you, thinking about my career right now. Can, can you talk about what it's meant to you to make this magical run with this group of guys? Yeah, for these guys, it's been a joy. You know, when we made our announcement, it would be our last year. I told my wife, Mickey, I said, look, I'm, we're going for it. I'm going to put everything into it. And I got a group. They're young, but I, I think they got a chance. And I, w I was right about that. I was right about that. So every day, I mean, we had our, we had some few bumps in the road here, but you know, they won 32 games, man. You know, they and and they turned it around in March, where, you know, they, they've been beautiful, beautiful young men to coach. So I could not ask for more. Front row on the right side, Dana. Uh, Dana O'Neill at The Athletic. Mike, you talked about the tears for them, but you're obviously dry-eyed right now. I mean, you have perspective, obviously, that they don't have. How do you kind of, what is your perspective on all of that? And how do you kind of keep your emotions in check right now? Uh, I think when, you've, when you have three daughters, ten grandchildren, and you've been through quite a bit, you're used to taking care of 
the emotions of the people you love and that you're responsible for. And that's where I'm at. And uh, I'm sure at some time I'll deal with this you know, in my own way. But uh, for right now, we need to deal with it with our family. You know, we, we've developed a family and, and um, um, you know, in the last three ball games before this one, these guys made unbelievable plays right after one another to put us in this position. But tonight, we still made some plays, but not enough. But not enough. In the front row, toward the left. Hi, Lauren Walsh with WXII. Um, this one's for Paulo and Trevor. You've only been with Duke for one season, of course, but I'm wondering what you have learned about the Duke Brotherhood, what that means to you, um, less so kind of the alumni base, but how you've experienced it this season with this team. Trevor, first, please, then Paulo. Um, <clears throat> brotherhood, I mean, it's a family. It always been my dream to play for Duke since I was a little kid watching on TV. And when I got the offer and I committed, I was all in. I knew it was a brotherhood, but I didn't, I didn't know it was this type of level. Like everybody's family, everybody want what's best for each other. Everybody love each other. Um, and this my, this probably the best group I ever played with. Um, every day they all talk to me, tell me, you know, give me motivation. Um, held me responsible, responsible for everything, um, and I'm happy I played with them, and I'm happy, you know, I was able to come here and play with this group, and I can't ask for nothing else. Paulo. Um, yeah, just, you know, it's much more than um, just a saying, you know, that's what I learned, um, you know, just coming here, um, you know, being from the Seattle, the West Coast, far from home, you know, these guys embraced me from, from day one and, you know, coach, you know, recruited me, you know, he lived up to everything he told me. Um, it made me a better player, made me a better man. Um, and, and I <clears throat> thank him for that. Um, and I'm just proud to have played with this group, you know, you know we, gave it, we gave it our all and it, it sucks we came up short, but, you know, I'm proud of the effort we put in and um, the way we went out. Second row left to center. Phil Haynes with the three-point conversion. Coach K, this is for you. You always talk about the next play, on to the next play. Is there a, another message or a certain message that you would give the players with your exit and the fact that, you know, what happened tonight? At some time, let's deal with tonight in the season. And then uh, obviously we're concerned about all their futures and making sure that uh, we give them good guidance and advice and support in, uh, in how we move forward. And uh, they know that I'll always be with them, you know, so they, they know that. And, uh, uh, and we'll be able to move on as a program, but uh, my relationships with them will, will always be there. You know, look, the, these guys were really good. These, they weren't good, they were really good. And, uh, they were, they've been a joy. I, I, uh, they've been a joy. Third row left to center, John. John Fan to field the 68. Uh, for the players, when you hear that, that, that you've been a joy, what has it meant for you to be with, with him in, in this final ride? Wendell first, then Trevor, then Paulo, please. Um, I think for me it's been everything. I was like these two guys up here. I mean, it was a dream of ours to come here. I um, mean, our coach delivered on every promise he gave us and even more. Uh, like Paulo said, you know, he only turned us into better uh, players, but he turned us into better people. Um, and, and we have someone like, like that of his caliber. Uh, he doesn't have to take the time to do any of that. Uh, so he does it. Uh, I mean, he does it with his heart. He does everything with his heart. I um, mean, he loves each and every one of us dearly. Um, and we all love him. I mean, so we can do nothing uh, but thank for everything he's done for us. Trevor. Uh, yeah, like Wendell said, um, since I've been here, um, Coach K um, always been there for me, um, got on me at times when I needed to be get on. Um, and like, like Dell said, 
Um, he wants best for, best for us. Uh, and I think everybody can say that on the team. Um, not just only him, but everybody on the staff, including managers, everybody. Uh, it's a whole collective effort. Um, and I think, I think all of us left it out there and, and played with joy. We had fun out there. Um, we came up short, but we, we for sure had fun out there. Follow. Yeah, um, you know, just being able to, to go to war with Coach and the team, you know, for the whole season, you know. Um, you know, he was so committed to us all year, never made it about him, you know, and you're just proud that you that we was able to go out and, you know, go in and fight, be in a fight with Coach every every game, you know. Um, it, uh, you, you don't get time to think about it right now, but I'm sure when we look back on it, we're going to be proud that, you know, we got to play for him. And, and he had our back, you know, the whole year, you know, had our back every game, put a lot of trust in us, always believed in us. And, um, yeah. On the right side, third row, Ian. Uh, Mike, Ian O'Connor with the New York Post. Uh, when the sting of tonight eventually eases up a little bit, do you think your lasting memory of this final tournament will be what your kids gave you in those final five minutes against Michigan State? Or in, throughout the tournament, I think, Ian. You know, like uh, uh, you don't define a season with one game or one minute of a game or you define a season by – you know, what's happened throughout the whole season. And uh, so um, it's, it's been a heck of a year for us. And how these guys turned it around after we didn't play well in our last four regular season, including the tournament, was really one of the best things that's happened for me as a coach in the last five, six years. Yeah, for a young group to really flip the switch like that and played that level of basketball. And uh, at times we played that way tonight, but part of the reason that we were not able to play was because we played against a really good team, that uh, they also did that. And uh, so, uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be fine. <laughs> like I've, uh, you know, I've been blessed you know, to be in the arena. And when you're in the arena, you're either going to come out feeling great or you're going to feel agony. But you always will feel great about being in the arena. And I'm sure that that's the thing when I'll look back that I'll miss. I won't be in the arena anymore. But damn. I was in the arena for a long time. And these kids, you know, made my last time in the arena uh, an amazing one. Up front, USA Today. Hi, Mike. Scott Gleason with USA Today. I know you said you're trying to manage the emotions. One emotion that seems like is coming out right now for you is empathy. I was hoping you could just talk about using that empathy to, to lift these guys up. They're clearly hurting. We just heard Wendell. Yeah, we are. We, privately, we're, it's tough to hug them in front of you. You, you might, or maybe not. But then you might think I'm showing off or trying to do it. It doesn't mean that much. But no, no we've had, you know, and we will. You know, like you, you take care of the people you love. And you take care of the people who have been committed to you and have believed in you, and they check every box. So, you know, we're, we're going to help them get past this and then move on because these are all really young guys. They have amazing futures ahead of them, amazing futures ahead of them. And we, we want to be a part of that. We want to help them with, with that. Final question right up front. Coach, congratulations. Steve Futterman from CBS News. You talked about being in the arena. Can you talk about whether it's this team or other teams? Talk about the joy you had in bringing them to achieve what they could achieve. Talk about what that meant to you. Well, if I was in the arena alone, I would always come out with agony. <sighs> so whenever I've gone into the arena, I've brought 
these guys or you know a US team or whatever so as a coach you you know, you, you are allowed to go into that arena with amazing competitors people who want to achieve at the highest level and then if you can teach them to achieve together at, at that highest level then you come out of there in, in good shape. So, I mean, that, that's the beauty of being a coach and, and having the opportunities that I've had. And coaching them has been an amazing opportunity for me. You got, are you kidding me? I mean, we had two years of COVID last year, 13 and 11. And uh, I believe in these guys and, and I should. And, and, and they came through. They did not win tonight, but they came through in an unbelievable fashion. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.